In this video, I'm going to show you how to put a tachometer on a Royal Enfield Bullet motorcycle. Um, watch all the way to the end of the video if you're really thinking about doing this because it doesn't work perfectly, but I'm okay with it the way that it does work. Um, you will learn more as you watch the video. Today I'm going to be installing a tachometer on a 2001 Royal Enfield Bullet motorcycle, which has point-style ignition. Um, I've also installed one of these on a Harley Sportster with electronic ignition, a 96 Sportster. So I know it'll work with uh, with point style or electronic ignition either way. When you're buying one on, on the internet, um, it'll, it'll probably be listed as a Harley add-on part and probably not as an infield bullet part, but it'll work. And um, the comes with a mounting bracket to mount it to your handlebars. And then the bracket that's on the back of it has this uh, circular part. So if there's somewhere on the bike, we'll go look at the bike and find the best place to mount it once we've got it hooked up. Uh, maybe you can mount it on a, on a bolt that's already on the headlight. So, got a bunch of wires here. Um, black goes to ground. Red is going to go to your ignition. So when you turn the, when you turn the bike on, there's power to it. And when you turn the bike off, there's no power to it. Uh, you might want to put a fuse in there as well. Uh, blue goes to the light. So this thing has a backlight in it. So if your headlights are old school and you can turn them on and off, you would wire it to that switch. And if your lights are on all the time, then you just wire it up where you've got the red wire. Just, just put it together with the red wire so that when there's power to the bike, the light is on. And then the green one, here's the little diagram they've got there. So the green one is going to go to the negative terminal on the coil. And it's just going to uh, send a signal to the tachometer every time the coil fires. And uh, then it'll, it'll count your revs for you. This one red lines at 8,000 RPM. So if you have a Royal Enfield that red lines above 8,000 RPMs, uh, you're, you're uh, out of luck. But uh, I don't think any of you are going to have that problem. So let's get out there and uh, get started. All right, here is the coil bolted to the rear fender. So if we zoom in on it, we can see there are two red wires, but one red wire has a black stripe on it. This one's got a black stripe on it. The other red wire has a white stripe on it. So we want to hook up the green wire from the tachometer to the negative wire. And in this case, the negative wire is the red wire with the black stripe. So black means negative, but they made both of the wires red. The red and white is positive, red and black is negative. Well, you want to check the wiring diagram of your particular motorcycle based on the country that it's in, because I think on different years and different models I was seeing different colors. A lot of them just use black and red, which is a whole lot simpler than, uh, not a whole lot simpler, but it's simpler than red and black and red and white. So check your wiring diagram first before you do anything regarding that. Um, there are the coil is held on a little better light there's you can see there's a nut on a post here with a uh, little circle connector so to do it cleanest you'd want to uh, fix up a, a wire with an end on it that you could bolt onto here and then run that wire I need to tidy up my wiring one of these days you probably want to take the green wire up the backbone here under the gas tank and then, you know, follow the other wires up into the back of the headlight uh, bucket. All right, I'm trying to find the best place to mount this. Now, as I said before, it does come with a mounting bracket. It looks like this. It's metal on the outside, and then it has uh, rubber on the inside with different spacers you can take in and out, depending on the size of your handlebar. A Harley handlebar is an inch thick, and the... Uh, Royal Enfield handlebars is seven eighths, so that can go, you know, somewhere along your handlebars, and then the actual tachometer has a mount on it with a hole in it, so you would stick this on your handlebar, put that in the hole, and then adjust it to where you want it to be. Now, in my case, um, I've looked at the back of this. You can see that you can take the mounting bracket off of the tachometer and switch the tachometer upside down so that you could have this coming off the top. And on the infield, I think the coolest thing would be to just release, take one of these uh, handlebar nuts off. Just 
stick the tachometer on there. It's the perfect size. And then, uh, ignoring the fact that it's upside down for the moment, I'm going to flip it back over. But then this would be the effect that you get. You can see your whole dashboard. Uh, looks pretty custom. You know, you can straighten it out and. Uh, that is money, so that's how I'm going to go ahead and do it. But you could use this bracket that came with it if you wanted to. All right, here's the back of the tachometer. So you just take the nuts and bolts off. You can reverse this. So I'm going to flip it that way. So now when I mount it off of my mounting bracket, it's going to be right side up. So now we consider where to run the wire, this wire that comes down here. We're going to want to stick it behind the headlight where it's going to hook up with all the other wires, and then we'll eventually run a green wire under the gas tank to the actual coil. So I'm kind of tempted to run it through this hole where the control cables are, but then when I look at it, when, I, when I'm pulling on the brakes and when I'm twisting on the throttle, these things move around a lot. I know everything moves around a lot because the bike vibrates, but I'm just afraid if I, if I jam it through this hole and wedge it in with all these other wires, it might get damaged. Uh, plus, you'll, then you'll see a wire on top of the actual uh, headlight nacelle. So, uh, I think it'll be cleaner and prettier if I zip tie it here to the handlebar and then just uh, sort of convince it to go in there and then find its place to hook up to the rest of the electrical system. All right, sorry it's nighttime. I just don't have any daytime off. But um, you can see I routed the, made it a black wire. It really should have been a green wire if I wanted to keep the, the wiring straight, but black is just easier to blend in with my wiring system. So I ran it up. The backbone, then it goes under the tank, and then it comes out the front here. And I'm gonna kind of just run it in with this bundle of wires up into the headlight, and it'll be fine. I suppose if I really wanted to be sanitary about it, I would have figured out a way to get it in this uh, tube with all the other wiring. But I'm okay, just zip tying it up. And I've got it zip tied up in here under the tank, and I'm just gonna run it into the into the bucket the headlight bucket and uh, connect it up in there. It should work fine. Uh, be almost undetectable once I get my air filter back on there in front of the coil. And I'm still able to get the little rubber cap on top of the nut on the coil even though I've put the extra connector in there. All right, the headlight can be removed by removing three bolts, one here, one here, and one down on this side. So I take those bolts out, remove this, and then unplug the headlight from its assembly and then go in there and wire up the tachometer. All right, so this is sort of a confusing mess of wires, but what we've got is the green wire is connected to the wire. I chose to use black even though it should have been green. That So the green wire is connected to the black wire, which goes back to the negative terminal on the coil. Um, the red and blue wires, red is uh, power and blue is power to the light for the uh, tachometer. Those I wired into the blue wire on the ignition switch. I, I, it's pretty sloppy wiring, but it's, it's uh, secure and it's insulated. So that way if I ever want to get rid of the tachometer, I can just buy a new ignition switch and replace from here up. The new ignition switches are less than 10 bucks rather than cut into my existing wiring system. Um, the negative wire from the speedometer, I wired into the black wire that goes to the instrument light, so the speedometer light bulb wire, and it works pretty good. The only thing is it's built for a dual fire system. You'll see what I mean when I fire it up. So it's made to work on a Harley which fires every every rotation of the engine. So the Harley fires on the exhaust stroke too, and this one doesn't. So if you had a two-stroke motorcycle this thing would work. On a four-stroke motorcycle where it's only firing every other revolution, the tachometer is reading only half the RPMs that it should. So at 2,000 RPMs it's going to show me 1,000 and at, or the, and at uh, when the engine's actually turning 4,000 RPMs it's going to be reading 2,000. So as long as I divide it in two by my head, in my head, then I'm okay. Um, the cheapest fix would be to take this thing apart and build a new face for it or just change this times 1,000 to times 2,000, but um, at least I know what my engine's doing, even though this is not entirely accurate. There is a capacitor inside there. I had the one of my Sportster 
um, stopped working and there was something rattling around in there and I opened it up and there was a capacitor in there. So I've read on the internet about car guys changing the capacitor in a tachometer when they're going from a V6 to a V8 and that making the tachometer read correctly. I haven't seen anything on, on what size tachometer you'd want to use or what size capacitor you'd want to use for this tachometer. If anybody knows that, please tell me and maybe that'll be my next experiment. But for now, um, I will go for a ride and you'll see what I mean. We'll be uh, flying along at 2,000 RPM indicated, but that's really 4,000 actual RPMs. And it's also worth mentioning that for these tachometers, there are people who sell an adapter called a dual fire adapter that's supposed to make it work on a bike that only fires every other rotation like a normal engine should. But that adapter will only work if your bike has more than one cylinder. So like if it's a twin, then it turns two wires into one and it takes the spark from one, uh, one of the coils and takes the spark from the other one of the coils and sends them both to the tachometer, effectively doubling the number of signals going to the tachometer. But if you only have one cylinder, then that doesn't work. So you pretty much, uh, the only way you can do it is uh, if you can get in here and change the, the capacitor, if you can put new numbers on here so that the uh, numbers match up. Or uh, there is a Smith's tachometer that Royal Enfield sells, but it's enormous. It, it'll sit, it's designed to sit out here uh, off of the, the headlight bucket, and it costs $400, so, whereas this one's about 60 bucks. So I'm gonna be content with this one for now. Let's take it for a ride and see how she works. All right, I'm gonna brave the brutal uh, February California winter weather to go for a test drive and see how this thing works. So we turn it on, it's gonna check itself, go back to zero. We, then we start up the bike. So you can see 500 RPM is probably more like a thousand. So that's 40 miles an hour at fourth gear, showing about 1,250 RPM. So I think if you double that, you get about 2,500. Definitely half speed, uh, but I'm still happy with it. It, it uh, at least lets me know how fast my engine's going, and as long as I can divide by two in my head, then I'm pretty good. So I hope this helped, and I also hope one of you figures out how to uh, calibrate the tachometer to actually read correctly and tells me how to do it. I, I wonder if you took a, a capacitor half the size or half the half the rating or double the rating of the one that's in there if it would work.